All right, so I think we're going to get uh, this rolling here. If you guys are ready to get rolling, uh, I'll let Sam kick things off. Hope you guys are all ready to kick ass. All right, so first of all, thanks for coming. Uh, I'm Sam Schepler. I'm one of the co-founders of Skyscope Creative. Uh, we believe that video is the best way to communicate your most important messages online. Um, graduated from Clark, uh, film comm major in 2011. And we all did our fifth year and graduated this past spring. Uh, communications, myself. I'm Alex Dunn. I'm another co-founder of Skyscope. And Gabe is our third co-founder who's here kind of videotaping for us. So if you know anyone who might get some value from this, you can tell them to check out our blog. It'll be up there in a few weeks. Um, I was a Clark graduate as well. I went through the entrepreneurship and innovation program while I was here. Um, took the capstone as well and was a music undergrad. Moved, uh, did my MBA through Clark as well with concentration in marketing. And uh, we really took the leap of faith in July and moved into an office. And it's been a really great experience for all of us. Um, just growing the business and trying to figure it out as really young, you know, first time startup entrepreneurs. Um, and now you guys have a little bit of an idea of who we are. Um, we'd like to get a feel for kind of who you guys are. Um, so I'd like to see a show of hands and kind of what I want to see, keep your hands up if all of these apply to you, we want to see this number grow maybe. So how many of you guys are students? Oh, that's already, that's everyone. Um, how many of you guys have a job? How many of you guys? Does what count? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. If you're, if you're working for some money, you're working. Um, uh, how many of you guys consider yourself entrepreneurs? Come on, everyone should be an entrepreneur here. And how many of you guys, if you haven't considered yourself yet, consider becoming an entrepreneur one day? Oh, so that exclusive mindset. Well, that, well, that either way. It, that okay. works, so. It's all about the mindset, so awesome. So what we're going to talk about today, uh, I'm going to tell some stories uh, illustrating uh, five key principles we've uh, learned that have really helped us uh, kick some ass so far. And these are kind of you know business principles, but at a broader level, they're really uh, just kind of principles of life. So um, yeah, but there's a there's kind of a twist since we're at Clark right now today um, for this. Every single one of these conventional wisdoms that we're going to do are going to be you know challenging the conventional wisdom, and um, you know going challenging against convention, changing the world. Exactly, exactly. Um, but just as a warning, there's always exceptions to rules, and you know we don't want you guys to think that we're telling you this is absolutely what you should do. But this is stuff that works for us, and we hope that it works for you guys as well. And you know you can use it and put it to good work. Take so the, it, repackage it, make it your own, and yeah. make your own. Take your own best judgment. So our first conventional wisdom is that bad our problems are and challenges are bad, and that you should stay away from them and keep them as as small as possible. So. And when you're an entrepreneur, <laughs> great, great picture, isn't it? Yeah, it is. uh, so. Do you guys do that when you're frustrated? <laughs> yeah, I have no idea how much teeth mark I have. Yeah. <laughs> I would actually say biting your computer is a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I must yes. agree with that. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Yeah. maybe it's an opportunity. It's quite shocking if you, if you bite already now. It's true. It's true. Have you uh, bitten one? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not diverge here, folks. Okay. We're going to get hungry. All right, so um, anyways, uh, what we're really getting at here is any um, pain point or challenge is an opportunity for improvement. Um, so what, what a really takeaway that for, uh, is for potentially young entrepreneurs out there is pay attention. Pay attention to you know, your gripes. Pay attention to your friends' gripes. Pay attention to what people are complaining about in online communities. Go to read the three-star reviews on Amazon for a product. They're right there, they're gonna tell you the problem with the product and that's up to you to make a better product. And that goes to the same with services. So let's talk a little bit about how our service got yeah, started. So in terms of recognizing problems and turning them into opportunities, we really recognize the problem in the video market when we see you know, these big production teams where you want a high quality video, you have to pay over $20,000 to sign with an ad agency and create these you know, really awesome videos that you can put up on TV or your website. And then there's the DIY, or sorry, DIY approach where you can do it for free, shoot it on your iPhone, and it's not as professional, not as high quality. And we really found that we could kind of fit in this middle space that was empty and create a very high quality um, product at a more a reasonable way, cost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, disruptive price, but not you know thousands, hundred thousand dollars. 
Um, so yeah, again, the, the, the key takeaway there is ch any challenge is a good thing. It's an opportunity for disruption and profit. Cool. So we're going to move on to the next kind of uh, conventional conception that people think, you know, limit, limiting your focus of your business limits your opportunities. A lot of people think that. And, you know, what I mean by that is if I have more products or if I have more services, I can market them to more people. But really, you know, you can see in this example that we have up here, this is a marketing agency that not only tries to specialize in a ton of different things, website design, creating music, doing newsletters, they also try and appeal to a huge amount of different industries. These people aren't going to appeal to anyone because there's no resonance when they find their target audience because they're all over the board. Exactly. So the key and what we're trying to get here is you need, you need to have focus. There's a lot of power in a niche. And that's probably one of the hardest things that we've found as entrepreneurs because naturally people with an entrepreneurial perspective are very, you know, we're always excited and we, every day we have a new idea. But the hardest thing is to focus on doing one thing because you can do anything you want in life. You just can't do it all at the same time. And that's really the biggest thing that can sink you is if you get distracted. And it's been one of the hardest things for us, um, especially in the beginning where we thought we could make videos for everyone and anyone. And now we're at a point where we have a very specific customer that we want to go after yeah. every day. And anyone else isn't that important to us. So I guess that raises the question, Alex, how do you find your area of impact with, with your business? Say you're just getting started, you have a little bit of idea, you know, how do you find that place to focus? In our opinion, and what we've done is it's a little bit of a mix between you know, your strengths and interests on this side and the, you know, the market's needs and the emerging uh, trends. And in our case, the technology. For example, camera technology becoming a lot cheaper allowed us to you know, start a business at a much reduced cost. We wouldn't have been able to do this 10 years ago. Um, and so it's really you know, paying attention to what do you do well and then what does the market need? Most of the businesses we work with are in the business to business space. That works really well for us because we're able to go to the top faster because it's business to business is um, less crowded. It's much less crowded a space right now for you know marketing. Business to business relied on relationships for a long time. Now it's crucial to have a strong uh, web marketing presence for B2B and it's relatively sooner that that's happened, so we're able to take advantage of that. All right, so yeah, let's move on to the next uh, conventional conception here, and that's a pretty big one, it's <clears> goals. <throat> so everyone thinks they have goals, but in reality, if your goals aren't written down on paper or written somewhere on your desktop screensaver or hanging above your computer at work, you really don't have goals. Because a written goal is really where you need to be. Do you have anything you want to add to that? I would say that, it's, that for example, we had the goal of getting this presentation done ahead of time, but we actually just did it this morning because we didn't write it down. So yeah. don't, exactly. don't do that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That happens. That does happen. Put it on yeah. a list. Make sure you make, see yeah. it every day exactly. if it's important. Um, so you know, to continue on that, for setting goals for yourselves, um, I'm sure all of you have heard of this, setting SMART goals and making sure they're specific, measurable, attainable, relevant time bound, you know, set up your goals so that they come under the, or, you know, fit into this framework and it'll really help you achieve more every day. And beyond that, like I said, post them up, put them yeah. somewhere where you and can see. And another thing is, um, aside from like uh, short term goals, it's very important to have vision goals, big goals for your organization. When the going gets tough, and it will, if you don't have a big goal, you're never going to be able to keep going because at the end of the day, it's, you know, you got to have a big goal because that's what motivates you. That's what motivates your team members. And uh, that's what really keeps you pushing when it gets hard. Exactly, exactly. Because you know, it will get hard and it does get hard and that's fine. But you just got to have a big goal to keep working towards. Yeah. So for our first, you know, two, three months when we were working, trying to figure things out, we set daily goals and, and maybe even weekly goals at the farthest. And now we have a six month goal list and a one year goal list. And like Sam said, a very big you know, lofty one year vision that where we want to be in a year. So, and having that yep. up on our office wall that we just put up the other week has been tremendously helpful in keeping us from doing stuff like this that <laughs> we forget about. Anyway, our next conventional wisdom is about sales and selling. A lot of people think that selling, you know, is proving that you're better or your service is faster 
or your product has more features and that you need to shove that down someone's throat so that they buy it from you. And in no case is that... And you probably had that happen to you, so... Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah, so... Um, we learned a lot about selling, and just show of hands, who, who loves selling here? Raise your hand. Nice. Well, I hope that all you guys can learn to raise your hands, because, sorry, everything starts with a sale. But the good news is, and you're going to have to learn to sell, but the good news is selling isn't, doesn't have to be bad. And the, the only reason that you know, we hate selling is because we're doing what really actually isn't selling. And, the, and I'll explain that in a second, so if you want to just go to that. For example, yeah. here's, this is how our sales letter started out when we were in our business. I'm going to share this. This is literally an, a letter we sent out to businesses. This is an email, email sales letter. Highlighted in orange is all the uh, times we talk, we say we, we talk about our business. We even start with we. That's terrible. You're never going to get someone's attention when you start with we. Um, there's, you know, here's a little green about your company, your company, but for the most part, we're talking all about us. We're better because of this. Blah, 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 blah. Doesn't work. You never get anyone's attention. Now, this is what we do now. So this is a, a, a LinkedIn message that I sent recently to a, a chairman and CEO of a large uh, technology company. And now this is a deal in the pipeline. And I'll, let's break it down and try to learn a little bit about how to sell in today's world. All right, first of all, you have to build credibility. First thing, make a suggestion. It's clear that I understand the business because I'm making a suggestion that he values. I'm piquing his curiosity. Not trying to, I'm not talking about like, what I can do, but I'm appealing to what he's interested in. So now, he got back to me. Simple, just to the point. Exactly. So you guys can see, I mean, the point we're trying to make here is that you're not really trying to sell your product or service or tell them about what you can do. You're trying to tell them or try and understand where their pains are, where their problems are, and try and fit in in a place there to make it work. So don't send emails like this ever. <laughs> yeah. if That will save you a month of work if you're ever starting a business. Keep it short. No one has time for that. And so. use LinkedIn. It's an amazing resource. Yeah, LinkedIn is awesome. Um, the last conventional wisdom is, you know, you don't need to be a giant company or a big brand to, to make branding a priority. You don't have to be Coca-Cola to worry about your logo. You, pretty much everyone has to be worried about branding. It's important for companies of all sizes and especially, you know, for you and your personal brand as you go out and maybe look for a job at a startup or, you know, start your own business. Definitely. And yeah, as Alex said, you're, you're, the design of your brand does matter. And it's, it's not just the, you know, the aesthetic quality of how you make your logo. Um, choosing what type of brand you're going to uh, have and what you're going to like focus on is going to determine everything in your business. For example, when we first started out, we were very enthusiastic and we said, you know what, we're going to be, we're going to make the best videos. We're going to do them at the best price and we're going to turn them around right away. Sounds good in theory, right? But the problem with that is it's, it doesn't work. Um, if you don't charge enough to have a good profit margin, you're eventually not going to be able to deliver the best product. That's just the start of the issues with that. So it's really important, again, coming back to focus, to pick an area you want to excel at and don't try to do everything well. Just pick one thing to focus on and do very well. Yeah, you know, think about it as how people perceive you. If you are the fastest and the cheapest, you're definitely not the best. There's, it, there's a disconnect there. You know, you can't be all three. Otherwise, just people won't understand yeah, it. And, and by no means should you always try to be the best. There's a lot of great companies out there who, who don't brand themselves on being the best. They're not a, you know, they don't have that luxury ideal, but you have to commit to one of them. Yeah. At least one. And, and just a side note. Um, so branding, <clears throat> when I was at Clark, I did my capstone on personal branding. Branding isn't just... Uh, about business, I mean, sorry, about your own business, even if you're working with someone, you also have a personal brand. So let's consider, let's consider how we purchase an automobile. How many of you right now have a car that you know the exact specifications of the engine? That's awesome, all right, good. But overall, most of you guys don't. Now, why do we, why do we really buy cars? We buy them because of the brand, the feel, the, you know, the vibe that we get. It's the same 
reason you're going to be promoted, hired, fired, you name it. No one's going to hire you or fire you based on you know your resume and who you are on paper. They're going to do that based on the soft skills, which is your personal brand. So kind of just like you think about you know how you're going to position your company, think about how you're going to position yourself in your classes with your professors and in your internships and in anything your, you do in yeah, life. Even with your friends, how you, yeah. you know, how they perceive you and how you it's, act. It's the them. soft skills that, you know, that people get. They're not going to see those, those hard skills. And that, just a quick point about resumes, ha, make something real, put it online. No one reads resumes anymore. You got to start a blog, start a blog. If you take photos, put them online. Just get your stuff online. So just to recap, you know, <clears throat> problems are good. They're not bad. You should not run away from them. You know, they are an opportunity to make something new and innovate and make a lot more people happy that have the same problems that you do. You want to focus and not, you know, try and please everyone. You got to do one thing. Well, what's the saying? You can't. You can do everything, but just not at the same time. Um, so you know, set goals. Write them down on paper and <clears throat> make them your goals and put them somewhere where you can see them. Um, sales isn't bad. You know, you should be selling every day, even if it's um, a really, you know, a, you're a teacher and you want to sell your students on why something is important. Why should we, they, we pay attention to this as, as students? You know, you got to sell it, sell it to them. It's just exactly. a, yeah. And then branding, which we just covered quite a bit, so I don't want to get too much more into that. But you know, if you guys have any questions or if you want to share a uh, story about, you know, kind of what we were talking about, any of those points, we'd love to. Hear. Re resumes aren't, don't make it. They don't give you an opportunity to stand out. You need to have like a real portfolio. If you're a writer, like for example, you know, people are going to read when you apply to the job. They're going to read your writing samples. They're going to read. They're going to look at things you make. They want to. They want to see how you think. Have a resume, but really yeah. do something else. And that's why have everyone should have a Twitter account and tweet about you know something from the, your, your business perspective. If you like advertising, tweet about advertising. You like marketing, tweet or marketing. That's like a window into your brain for an employer seeing this is how you know you think. You, you, you follow interesting things. That sets you apart. That's definitely you know, a concern that a lot of people have, and I even had quite a bit. Well, I was a huge hater on Twitter for the longest time. I did not want one. I was like, why did Hater you of, not hater on. Hate, hate on, <laughs> hater of, whatever. I didn't, did not have any care to use Twitter, and I didn't understand it, and I didn't, you know, I wasn't. I didn't want to tell people where I was or what I was doing or anything like that. And you know, once I got on there and started to look at it, they're not going to collect any data you don't put out there. So it's up to you to you know make sure you're not putting things out there that you don't want people to know about. So for instance, you don't need to tweet like I'm on the way to class or I learned this at this class. You can just say a great. I heard a great thing from this person and you know retweet someone else's point. Or, yeah, most know. most. Uh, Twitter, a lot of Twitter is just cur or social media is for business side is just curating content. So you're not actually, you know, giving necessarily your whole like personal take on it. You're just, you know, sharing it. But um, yeah, social media, not, not as important. Having a blog is probably the most important thing. And that you can control because you can control what you write about. I, if I give any advice to a young student trying to get a job, uh, I would say create a blog that demonstrates your intelligence and you know is related to the field that you want to work in. That's literally what got us here right now. No, we, we care about you know. Uh, well, first of all, when we hire someone, the thing that matters most is you know are they a good fit with our company culture? Like, are they someone that you know we can hang out with outside of like grab a beer with and you know chat with and have fun with? Not you know when we're working because if if that's not going to work out then you know, they're not gonna be, work out in the company. So uh, no, traffic doesn't matter. We just wanna like, get a feel for their, how they think and you know, make sure they're a you know, smart person. You know, everything changes and you, you can't be resistant to change. You, got, you gotta be very uh, open-minded. Um, one thing we do right now is we have this thing called like, a, it's called like avalanche action. So we have like a one year goal, which is like our avalanche. And then all the little goals should be like a bunch of little, uh, little snowballs about to start the avalanche. So we say like, is this in line with you know, where we want to go? Anything else, Alex? 
Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not easy to make goals, and that's why it was, you know, one of our big slides is you think you have goals, and everyone thinks they have them, but it's actually kind of hard to get them onto paper and get them to be actionable, and it's something you have to spend time on and you have to think about, and like Sam said, with a, with a big vision in mind, you know, it's easier to figure out what the steps are to take other than figuring out the steps and seeing what happens later. So, you know, reach for something and pick all the steps you need to get there. Set big goals, set dream big, but start small. And you know, figure out what the first step is. Because there's always a first step, no matter what. Exactly. So like Sam was saying, you know, aligning what we're good at and market conditions is kind of how we figured out where we want it to be. So the market conditions were, you know, tons of consumer brands have video, they're going online, they're going on TV commercials, they have tons of money to spend, get the picture in front of as many consumers as possible. In the B2B world, they didn't have to market with video as much. It wasn't important for them. And we realized that very quickly, tons of B2B huge you know, technology enterprises were in need of video to explain their really complicated products and you know, communicate with their online visitors. And drive sales. Yeah, so you know, video can help with all this stuff. And we can make really good videos. And a lot of companies can't afford you know, these $20,000 production shops, but need something that measures up to their quality of their brand. So we, def we kind of, you know, after months of trying to, you know, do videos for everyone, we realized we need to focus on B2B, you know, technology-driven industries and, you know, finding customers that fit with you know, the visual <coughs> yeah. element of video. In, in addition, I'd also uh, add that it, we felt very strongly that we wanted to make videos to support uh, meaningful companies. And so we didn't really want to make, like, videos for fun little like application mobile apps that at the end of the day are just a game like we want to you know and we're still a very young company we're not even a year old so we're by no means like at that goal <laughs> when we give this presentation but, next time we'll be a completely <laughs> different company <I> guess. <laughs> but yeah we will be to be in uh, high tech innovation you know has the opportunity to really you know change the world in a lot of respects uh, so that's kind of what drives to that as well in terms of finding prospects though i mean once you once you know where your customer is it's, it becomes much easier to find them um so, you know, we use a lot of resources like business journals and you know, high-tech magazines and stuff. If you're advertising in a high-tech magazine for other business people in that industry, you know, you're bound to need a video as well. So there's plenty of good places for us. And if you guys want, we can show you one of our videos if, if anyone's interested. The one online. This is one that actually no one has seen yet. So yes, it's a super actually, special. We were in no San Francisco. These guys went to San Francisco last week. And uh, we shot uh, some testimonial videos for a Boston-based company called the Sware. And there, if you guys, you know, we talked about sales. If you guys are interested in doing sales ever, check out Yesware. It's a really awesome sales email platform. And um, let's see if we can pull this video up. 